So I've done Tim Burton's films, I've done Christopher Nolan's films, and I also did David Fincher's films ranked. Now it is time to rank Quentin Tarantino's films. And there's, I consider there to be nine of his films. Um, a lot of people consider Kill Bill Volume 1 and 2 to be one film. I respect that, but for me personally, I'm going to be ranking nine of his films because I believe right now he has nine, although some would say he has eight because of that explanation. Um, he's also directed a couple, you know, other films, like co-directed. When I say co-directed, I mean he had like a guest appearance, like in Sin City or Four Rooms. And it's like, to me, that doesn't count. This is the nitty gritty ranking of his films from worst to best, nine being worst, one being best. So let's get into it. Number nine for me is Death Proof. Uh, I, this is his most recent film I've seen, actually. I legitimately saw this specifically so I could do this list. Um, I really thought this film was not, not that good at all, actually. I, I think I, I get what it was going for, but I just think that it could have done a lot more with the material. I respect with what it did with the cinematography, how it was actually shot on film. And they utilized a lot of film grain and I believe it was 30 millimeter cameras. Don't quote me though. But I, I liked that aspect. But I thought the film as a whole was just kind of like very, I get the whole point was to be pointless, but there was just nothing really to grasp onto. And I, that's, I don't know, that's what really kind of bothered me about the film. Um, the writing really wasn't that strong, especially for a Tarantino film. But that's why it's number nine. Uh, number eight for me is, and a lot of people are going to shoot me for saying this, but number eight for me is Kill Bill Volume 1. Um, now, I saw this film for the first time when I was 17. And then I rewatched this, I think, a year ago. So I, it's still fresh in my mind. And I just, I don't like the film. I get what it's going for. I get that it's supposed to be a throwback to anime as well as, you know, revenge films that were from the, like, 70s and, like, you know, obviously more modern. But... I really didn't like this, and I know a lot of people are like, well, it's the first part, so of course, but even if I put the two parts con con combined, I mean, I would have said I didn't like the first half. So if volume one's considered one film, it means I didn't like the first part of the film. So regardless, you're screwed either way, whichever you look at. But beside the point, number seven for me is Jackie Brown. Uh, this is a film that the writing was okay. It was okay. Um, it felt a little too long. It felt very subdued for a Tarantino film. It was very interesting. There wasn't that much language. There wasn't that much violence. There wasn't that much philosophy. It was very strange, honestly, for a Tarantino film not to focus on that. So I know what you're thinking. Well, Chad, you're always saying about you want originality, but the story itself was basic. The characters really didn't stand out, which is weird for a Tarantino film because a lot of the characters stand out. I mean, even, even Kill Bill, Volume 1, I didn't like it. But the character stood out. I mean, the bride, famous character. But that's why uh, Jackie Brown's number seven. Number six is the film that started all with Tarantino. That is Reservoir Dogs. This is a solid film. Uh, I think the writing is really good. The opening scene when they're just on the table, you know, just talking, drinking coffee, and just talking, and, you know, you're in the middle of a conversation. It was really well done. This is a film also that's very simple in its execution, but it's the writing that really does a good job of showcasing the talent of not only the actors, but Tarantino's writing style. It's a solid film. That's why, of course, it's number six. Number five, though, is Kill Bill Volume 2. Yes, I can't lie. I actually liked Volume 2 better than 1. For me, Volume 2 did such a great job of not only slowly building up to what ended up being, you know, the final act, or if you want to call it the final act of both parts, even though a lot of people consider it one film, as I already mentioned, but I consider it the final act of the second movie. And Volume 2, for me, just that final act really did a good job. I loved how Tarantino used Sergio Leone's score, specifically from The Good, The Bad, and Ugly, if I recall correctly. And I, I, I don't know. It was well acted, and I thought it was actually satisfying. If there is a Volume 3, who knows? Hopefully it, uh, you know, accumulates this trilogy and makes it, you know, two out of three great Kill Bill films. But nonetheless, you know, Kill Bill, it is number five for me. Uh, number four is Inglorious Bastards. And this is a good film. This is a film that the writing is crazy good. Christoph Waltz's opening scene is mind-blowingly great. I mean, the amount of tension that is in it, you have to see it for yourself if you haven't seen it for some reason by now. But the amount of tension in it is crazy good. And I love how it was a throwback to the opening uh, crazy scene where you first meet um, the bad, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's really good. Um, 
I think this is a film, though, that unfortunately the final act, it really does start to fall apart for me personally. Um, and it's what kind of noticed for me how Tarantino's final acts usually aren't that strong, unfortunately. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just directing. But for some reason, the final act usually falls apart for me. And when I first saw this film, it's what kind of showcased that for me, which is, you know, why it's number four. But again, I, I still like it. You know, I still like it for what it is. Is it rewatchable for me? Eh, I think two times is enough. But number three is a film that I had to watch a second time to really like it. And um, it is a film that I do appreciate now. I think it's really good. It's flawed. Don't get me wrong. It does have its flaws. I'd be lying if I said, yeah, it's a masterpiece. It's not. Um, number three is The Hateful Eight. This is a film that it is really good. Don't get me wrong. It takes a lot from the thing, from Ennio Morrison's score, you know, to the actual setting. It even takes from Reservoir Dogs, you know, another Tarantino film. But it's how it goes about it. It's respect to the dialogue and how it trusts the audience to trust the director with knowing where the story's going to go and that it's going to be satisfying. And I like it. Again, I'd be lying if I told you that it is a perfect movie. It is far from perfect, but it's still a really enjoyable, well-crafted film. And I would definitely recommend it if you haven't seen it for some reason. Number two is what a lot of people's number one would be for this list. But me personally, I respect this film. It did a lot for the independent cinema genre. It also did such a great job of bringing home non-linear storytelling to the mainstream because this is a film that went from independent cinema to mainstream cinema with just how much it influenced everything. And that would be Pulp Fiction. Very much so an influential film. This is a film I respect a lot. I like it. I love the writing. I think the writing and characters really hold up this film. Non-linear storytelling is really good. Um, I don't think it's the best example of it, personally. But I love that it inspired... Um, Memento, The Usual Suspects, um, you know, a lot of non-linear storytelling films that I love, Mulholland Drive, and it all started with this film. So for that, I respect this film a lot. Again, I think it, there are a couple of nitpicks here and there that I have with this film, but it's still a really well-crafted film at the end. Uh, number one is a film that re-watching I liked a lot better, especially, um, especially if you view it as a superhero film, which you can. And a throwback to Westerns of like the 1950s, 60s, which I'm a big Western fan if you haven't figured that out by now. And the number one for me goes to Django Unchained. This is a really well-crafted film. Does it fall apart in the final act? I personally think it does. But nonetheless, I think it is such a well-crafted film as a whole. And it really does satisfy, especially the... You know, the scenes where, you know, you see Django and uh, Dr. King Schultz, their scenes together were fabulous. And DiCaprio did such a great job in his role um, as uh, Calvin Candy. I, I really do like this film. And that's why it's number one. Again, not perfect, but it is pretty darn close to it. So that is my list, guys, for Quentin Tarantino's films ranked worst to best. Um, I've done it with the last two ranking lists, and I'll say this. Tarantino is a director that, when I see his name, I do want to go to the movies. I do want to see his films. That being said, his films sometimes are very mixed for me. I do notice that his writing is really strong whilst his directing isn't as great as I want it to be. In fact, it does have, most of his films do have that whole problematic final act with Kill Bill Volume 2 and Pulp Fiction being exceptions. Uh, even Hateful Eight actually has a pretty good final act. But his other films, they all have problematic final acts. I mean, even Django and Sheen, I have problems with the final act. But his writing is so strong and his characters are so interesting. But that you can't, you just can't help but want to see his next film. And that's why his next film, which will be coming out in the summer of 2019, uh, which is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And it's a reference to Sergei Leone's Once Upon a Time in America, Once Upon a Time in the West. I'm very much so excited for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I am. Not only for the cast and Tarantino, but the fact that I think that he is really gaining his stride. Um, if you notice, both Django and Chain and Hateful Eight are higher on my list, and I think he's really gaining a grasp of his directorial skills, and I really do hope that Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is a great film. Who knows? We'll see, though, in the summer. But for now, guys, that's my list. Uh, what's your list for Tarantino's films? Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below, and as always, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, and I'll 